What's good guys? It's Jason from Naoko Ball Pythons and this is the latest <laughs> of our series of um, breeding without a, without an ultrasound or breeding ball pythons that is without an ultrasound. If you haven't been watching this series there's some really good videos and I'm gonna put one of those tabs up where you can get at the series. If you haven't been watching the series, it's turned out pretty good and it's real informative. And this is going to be the next one. And we're looking at signs that tell you that female is going to lay. So let's get to it. started pairing at the middle, beginning, middle of November. We're now mid-March and we're getting to the point where we're trying to figure out if the female is getting close to ovulating, if the female is ovulated, if um, the female isn't going to go at all and if you should stop pairing. We're at that time where we're trying to make those decisions as to what's going to happen in the season. So in this video, um, what I want to look at are some of the signs that tell me that the female is probably going to lay or things are looking good or some of the signs that indicate to me that that female probably isn't going to go this year or at least I should be paying closer attention to her so I can make that decision. I do want to say at this point, I am continuing to feed or offer food to all my animals. Some of the females don't want to eat. I am also pairing everything at this point. So regardless of the signs that I'm going to talk about and show, regardless of what I see, that's just giving me some kind of gauge as to what females to expect stuff from. But that doesn't mean that I've given up. So if I don't see the signs that I'm looking for, I'm still going to continue to offer food and I'm still going to continue to pair that female. We don't give up till about, July, <laughs> till about June or July, depending on the signs and behaviors of the animal. So what I've done is I've put together a few clips of me in the throes of looking at my animals and again the camera is rolling and it's just my thoughts and what I'm looking for and what I'm thinking so let's have a look okay guys so we are looking at a super pastel yellow belly and as you can clearly see oh I'm not zooming all the way she is there's the rest of her tub cooling not the classic ball wrapping but she is as far away from the heat as she can get definitely cooling a great sign um, that things are going well don't always expect the classic ball wrap people love posting pictures of their animals ball wrapping um, they will do that but what you're looking for is just cooling behaviors. Here is a Killer Blast Het Desert Ghost. Um, and again, showing the cooling behavior. And one thing I do want to mention is that this cooling behavior is very dramatic. And it's not always going to look as dramatic as this, oops, as this then pushed up um, all the way to the cool end of the tub. You guys can tell that it's me doing the camera work and not Shay. <laughs> um, but essentially, 
what you are looking for is, or what you want to see as your breeding season progresses, is your female coming way over to the cool end of the tub trying to cool off or trying to cool her body. The thinking is that with the hormonal changes, the female gets hot and they want to cool. So you will or should be seeing something like this. Okay, here is another female. This behavior I would consider, you can, well, first off, you can see where she's laying in the tub. This type of behavior, because I know this female and I know how this female normally behaves, where it normally situates itself in the tub, um, this I would also consider cooling behavior because this female has moved away from her heat and is trying to cool off. Remember, guys, they know what temperatures they want to be at, what temperatures they need to be at. So they, different females, are going to show different types of cooling behaviors and move to different points in the tub. So you have to be, during this time, you really have to be observant as to what's going on and what's happening with your females. Another point I want to make um, at this point when you're seeing the cooling behavior that aggressive feeding response that you were seeing earlier is going to be gone. Um, the feeding response is going to be a lot less aggressive um, and at some point they're going to go right off of feed. So expect that and feed accordingly. Um, and what I mean by that is feed as that aggression starts to wane, the size of the rodent that you're offering your animal, you want to decrease that size. I also want to note that um, actually today's feeding day, so all these animals that I'm showing you haven't been fed and they are sitting where and they're showing the cooling behavior is what I want to say. Um, you got to be careful when looking for that cooling behavior because after a feed, they are going to seek the heat to help digest the rat. And then what I find is then they'll migrate back over to the cool once a couple days after they've eaten the rat and it's been digested. So just keep that in mind. But again, the most important thing is to be observing your animals. Alright, now here's an example of an animal clearly on her heap. Um, she was cooling. She's, um, she has migrated back to her heat. Now she wants to be warm and she's completely off food. So expect that. Once they they will have a cooling period after that cooling period they are gonna migrate back to the heat and seek the heat and this girl is completely off food and has seek the heat and I expect her to ovulate in the next four weeks six weeks but we'll see what's gonna happen the other tool that I use to help me to determine how close a female is to ovulation is palpation or palpating. And what that is is literally just to manually feel the size of the follicles. So if you haven't palpated an animal before, what, and I'll demonstrate for you, but what you're feeling for are round. Um, follicles or but round little balls or what will feel like round balls in the belly of the snake and as the season progresses and as the female progresses those follicles are gonna grow I'm not that great at feeling them when they're really really tiny so I can feel feel them when they're about a small uh, size of a small marble and they'll grow to about 
I would say um, <laughs> and they'll grow to about the size of and me and my daughter who's behind the camera right now had a little back and forth discussion just now about the size but it'll grow larger than the large larger size marbles about the size of a small plum but the point is you will feel them grow as the season progresses and obviously once they get to a certain size the female is going to ovulate um, and then you know you're getting she's gonna lay something eggs or slugs so let's have a look at palpation and what I do all right so as I talked about earlier in the video this is an animal off food um, at one point she was cooling and spending a lot of time on this the cool side of her tub now she's moved back to the heat so in terms of behaviors She's done everything I want to see that tells me that she's progressed nicely. And we will palpate her. So the process is quite easy. What I like to do is obviously pull the female out. I'll close the tub part, part way so that her desire will be to crawl to the back of the tub. She's upside down. I'll right herself. Put her in and... As you see, her desire is to crawl back. What you want to do is just, I use my thumb and my index finger. Thumb on top, index finger on the bottom. And I'm putting some pressure, and with my index finger, I'm feeling for those follicles. Let me pull her out a bit and get it better. And you should feel them from halfway. There we go. One, two, boom, three and you should feel them from halfway down to about three quarters of the way down her body and this girl had some really nice large size follicles so things are looking real good for her let's have a look at another animal so here we have a really nice and dirty you can see her head is dirty <laughs> white snakes uh, super fire female um, we're going to do the same process and palpate her. So I'm going to close close the tub. And she wants that flight, um, wants to take off. It's very important to, when you're palpating, to let the animal move as opposed to move your hand down the body of the animal. Because what I find is when they move, the they loosen up the rest of their body. If you're just trying to run your hands down the animal, she's going to tense up and there might be follicles there and you, you're not going to feel them. So it really is one of those things of, with experience, it gets easier and easier to do. So again, we're going to do the same thing, thumb and index finger, let her crawl through my fingers, and with this girl, at this point, I don't think I'm feeling anything. That doesn't mean I'm going to give up. In both cases, I'm going to continue to offer food. I'm going to continue to put that mail in once a month. We are now, as I believe I said earlier in the video, we're now in mid-March. So there's still two, two and a half months before I have to I make a decision of giving up on the female for the season. Alright guys, so that's pretty much what at this stage of the season what I'm doing and how I determine where my females or how far along my females are in the process. Can't stress enough, it's way too early to be giving up on females that don't, aren't showing signs of development. Way too early, you're still offering food weekly. You are still watching the behaviors. You're still putting that mail in once a month. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank everyone for watching. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. Also, I do want to say right now it's some real trying times and a real test of all our faiths. 
um, please have faith in other people. Please, at this time, be considerate of other people, especially our, our elderly. Um, if we hold together, we'll get through. So until the next time, peace.